Remember the T2 camper van? I'm showing my age a little bit here, but I loved that van. It was very more to purpose. It had loads of space in it. The design was great as well. And then if you're Volkswagen and you sit down with your designers, your engineers, and you go, actually, how can we bring that back, but also modernize it and make it electric? Well, this is the result of it, the Volkswagen ID Buzz. And I think it looks fantastic. Look at the headlights, look at that big logo on the front and this colorway as well. It's probably my favorite one if I was to pick up one of these. Before I go any further, let's start with the design and see what you actually get for your money because this is also quite expensive. In fact, this version here, which is the ID Buzz style, will cost you, or starting from, just above 63,000 pounds, which, yeah, a lot of money. Right, starting with the design, like I was saying, you get that big Volkswagen logo. And I think straight away is reminiscent of that T2 camper van, which I really loved, you know, with a split screen and stuff like that. But we don't get that here because it's probably not good for things like safety and all that stuff. But anyway, I digress. So we have this flat front. It looks really good. I love, I love this two-tone color, the yellow mixed with white. And we've got the IQ lights here. So you've got your LED lights and this bar going across the front as well. Again, just giving you that old retro vibe without taking it too far. It's still kind of modern and I like it. It's just, it's just spot on. And I think the front of the car is probably my, the best part for me when it comes to the design. Further down below, you can see it's kind of low to the ground as well. And we get this nice design here, which I kind of like. It's like a, a cheese grater, but it works. And you've got some stuff hidden away, like your parking sensors and stuff to help with lane keep assist and reading the road and all that stuff. But you do know that this will end up having stuff get stuck in it as well, depending on where you live in the country or around the world. But so far, so good for us because uh, we live in London. We don't have any leaves on the roads. <laughs> and uh, up top, we have more stuff here. So we've got the camera. There's a little camera here, another sensor over there. And this will help you read like traffic signs and stuff like that, which we'll talk about more when we start driving it on the road because this can read the, the speed limits, for example. So then for adaptive cruise control, it would adapt to the speed accordingly. Let's go over to the side and see what else we've got here. So. Moving on here, on this side, if you go for the style, it comes with 20 inch wheels, uh, alloys uh, or tires, whatever, uh, standard, but this one's actually opted. Whoever specs this up, they've opted for a 21 inch uh, big wheels on there. And you've got the aerodynamically friendly alloys as well, which you can also remove the cover, but I'm not gonna do that in this video <laughs> because this doesn't belong to me. And uh, actually, before I carry on that side, you also get this air curtain on the side here, which passes air through over the tires and stuff like that, which helps with your drag coefficient which sort of helps with efficiency. But again, we'll talk more about the efficiency when we drive this on the road. And then we've got this big mirror here. And uh, I don't know what you're thinking. This is going to add to your road noise because it's nice and big, but it is a van at the end of the day. And visibility is very important when driving around and all that stuff. But the side view itself is very minimalist. There's not much going on here. It's just nice and clean. I really like it. And with this version here, you also get a little LED, like, lamp that turns on on here for the handle. So again, at night time, it just means you'll be able to see where you need to put your fingers to open the door. And then further back, we've got this three tabs here, which is kind of reminiscent again of that T2 uh, camper van. It looks really good. They've modernized that. I like it, but I don't think it serves any real purpose, but it's there. And then we get the LED lights that wraps around the back as well. And here we have a charging port which supports 170 kilowatts charging, which means 5% to 80% in about half an hour if you can find yourself one of those charging stations out and about to be able to charge this up very quickly. But overall, if you look at the side view, I think it looks really good. You've got short overhang, so the tires are pushed all the way back, all the way to the front. So it looks compact, but also big at the same time. This is a long wheelbase, more than 4,000 millimeters in length. Um, and it's based on the good old MEB platform as well. So if you've driven the ID3, the ID4, for example, this is very similar and uh, nice center of gravity as well because of the way the battery is placed underneath there. Moving on to the back, this is very simple. There's nothing much going on here apart from that big bar of uh, LED lights going on on the back, which actually lights up as well, which is good. You've got that ID buzz written on here. It looks very fun and playful as well. And this color just looks good. I think it stands out very much, you know, the two-tone uh, yellow and the white uh, there as well. So with this, if we open up the boot, we've got plenty of space in here. It's motorized as well, so you don't have to, you know, do any, put any, put in any work. It's got a button up there to close it back up and there's a little tab here to also pull it back down. But one thing first, before we go into the boot space and the size and stuff is the way this opens up is quite big. So this is good while it's good for protecting you from rain when it's raining and stuff like that. This is really nice. Uh, or if you use this for work, actually, there's this light that comes on here so you can actually see everything that you're doing 
as you're taking your tools out the back and stuff like that, or taking your luggage for, the, for that matter, uh, it's there to light it up, which is really cool. We've got a big boot space in here. You're looking at more than a thousand liters of boot space. And in the boot as well, uh, if you go for the ID Buzz style, it gives you a little divider. So if you lift this bit up, you can store other things. So for example, we've got charging cables in there, which is a bit messy at the minute. And then underneath there as well, you can slide in like your camping chair, your surfboard, your golf clubs, whatever you want to do. You can slide it all the way there and it goes all the way through to the car, which is really cool. And then put that back down and we get a nice flat surface. But what's really cool about this is it means when you fold the rear seats all the way flat, you get a nice flat surface all the way to the front, uh, which is a bigger space than you think it is um, in numbers. And also in reality, it means if you get a like an airbed, you can put that there. So if you go for camping, for example, you can actually like sleep there and there's no problems at all. It's just really cool. And we also get this little kit, which allows, your, uh, allows you to keep your luggage safe and sound in there so it doesn't slide everywhere. So you can fold it in half and it's got this Velcro, which you can just stick down. So that way your luggage in the boot doesn't slide anywhere. It won't stop it from toppling over, but at least it will keep it secure in terms of sliding everywhere as you drive. And look, it's nice and secure. With electric cars or SUVs or family cars, not all of them come with uh, the tow bar because electric weight and all that kind of stuff. So in this one, we have an electro electronically deployable tow bar. So push this button, releases it, kick it into place. And then now you can tow up to a ton which is, I think is decent. And then press it again, kick it into place and off you go. Right, moving on to inside of the car, we start with a passenger experience. This, you open the door, this can be motorized as well. You have to pay extra for that, but that's entirely up to you with your budget. And then we get into the car and you get plenty of room in here. It's incredible. When it comes to practicality, I think, this might be the top one out of all of them because I can't think of another car that would give you this much space when you get in for the passenger because look at this. Plenty of new room and this seat is even far back than you'd normally have it. And headroom, because it's not sloped to the back, it's, there's plenty. I can even, look, my head is still not touching. <laughs> Wait, look at this. Oh, it's plenty of space in it and hopefully that gives you an idea of how much space you get in here. It's, I can, <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. There's plenty of space in here, it's ridiculous. And it doesn't stop there though. So if you have food or laptop or anything, you can also have this table in front of you so you can store your cup there. Or if you have an iPad or something, there's even a little gap there to store your phone and you can watch a movie whilst you're driving. Or if you don't, there's also a pocket here where you can just store the phone away or put your passport in there if you're going for a, you know, you're traveling somewhere, store your passport nice and safely away, make sure everyone's got their passports. And uh, once you're done, pull the tab, pull it down. And there's also another pocket here to store more things like newspaper, documents or whatever. You can do that. And one thing I love about this, you can also recline the seat. <laughs> so you can get comfortable if you really want to for long journeys, which is really good. Don't do that on a flight, guys. And uh, you can also adjust this. So you can move forwards if you want to or backwards if you want to. So. Again, as far as practicality goes, I think this is one of the best in that, in that segment, in that area. That's a lot of space in there. Plenty of space to put your feet. There's no, nothing in the middle here. There's no you know, transmission tunnel or anything like that. So which means you can easily just slide around. In fact, this is probably one of the only cars that you can get in and move around in the van without opening a single door. So <laughs> if you're stuck somewhere, it's great. And speaking about stuck in somewhere, because you've got a sliding door, if you park in a, in a tight space in a car park, for example, this is also very practical. It means you won't have to worry about how close you are to the car next to you. So, and if you can't get in through the front door, you can also get in from here, walk through the center, center of the car and start driving away. So again, very, very practical. There's one more thing that I haven't mentioned is the amount of space you also have in the door card. So this plastic bit here, you've got plenty of space. So you can store cups and, Whatever you want to put there, you can put it there. But one thing to point out is the USB-C ports on either side. So as a passenger, if I'm sat on that side, I've got USB-C ports for charging my devices and on that side as well. And they're pretty fast as well. One thing I've noticed every time I charge my phone, I've got a Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra there. I plug it in and it charges super quickly for a big battery. And uh, yeah, and you also have your grab handles to make sure you're secure into place. And this is just so comfortable. The seats are nice, nice and soft. It's all like recyclable materials, sustainable uh, uh, items here. 
sustainable materials here, so which is really cool. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get stains off these very easily. That's something to test if you actually buy one. This is not my car, I can't test it. Um, but the material doesn't seem that something that you'd be able to wipe off a coffee stain easily. And uh, careful with what you wear as well. You might actually stain the seats. That's something to worry about, something to think about. Before we go in the front, like I was saying, you don't actually have to open the doors to get in the front if you don't want to. Like, look. It's ridiculous, so much space in here. Like I was saying, the practicality just continues. I think I've said that so many times in this video because that's literally the theme of what this car is all about. Plenty of space to put things. So like here, for example, you've got the door card where you can store so many things like your document, cups, bottle, whatever you want. There's another big gap here. It's ridiculous. There's loads of space in there. But let's move on to the front here where there's more things to talk about. Again, plenty of space. You've got all your button here, touch capacity button to control things like your lights and uh, windscreen heating and all that stuff. And then we have another little gap here, which where you might put maybe your keys. I don't know. It's not that big to store a phone. It's not that big for anything. Well, maybe you can chuck like a, maybe the car keys can, can go there. Let's, uh, fact let's try it yeah i think it fits perfectly for your car keys so yeah you can stick that there and then moving on to the side we have all this wood like material it's not it's not actually real wood by the way but uh it's it gives it gives a nice effect and we've got this big uh infotainment display on the front there we've got our ventilation stuff here for heating but that's not the star of the show by the way i will come back to that of course but i think the star of the show here is how much more space you also get this wireless charging area here which you can just drop your phone in there there's two usb-c ports there on that door as well for the passengers there's another usb-c ports there in here you can store your coffee cup or or can or whatever but if you don't have anything you want to store there or anything you can also put that away and hide it so which means you get more space here to play footsie with your passenger or you can put it out get your cups in there lock it into place pretty cool and then we have another shelf here past the shelf here you can store things maybe put your laptop there or ipad and then glove compartment box is there which is also pretty big it's just space everywhere and uh, we even get armrests for both passenger and the driver that's also adjustable so you can put it wherever you want to put it and it's on both sides because i can also have that for my right elbow so if you put this in cruise control on the motorway for example you're nice and comfortable you can just sit like this you know keep an eye on the road get comfortable really nice and the buzz has one more trick up his sleeve in here in terms of space available so this little box here this storage box you can also move it so press this button pick that up and you can chuck this away or put it wherever you want to put it but if you put that away for a second Look how much space you now get here. It's just ridiculous. It just means that maneuver that I did earlier where I went from the back to the front just makes it a lot more easier now. But one more reason why that's there is if you were to pass the surfboard through the seat or whatever, it just means more space to sort of store something that's pretty long. So they give you, they give you that flexibility to take this off and you can do that. And to put it back, make sure this is sticking up and then clicks into place so it doesn't move anywhere. But one more thing, I keep saying one more thing, but look at this. You can use that as a ice scraper. So when it's frozen outside, you can scrape your ice through that. And then the other one, which you can also remove as a bottle opener on there. So you fully prepped for a camping weekend away. One elephant in the room is the infotainment system. So the tech here. So if you sat in the ID3 or ID4, whatever, if you sat in those before, you know the pain that you get with this. Although this is a little bit up to date, so it's a lot more responsive when you're swiping across. I say responsive, you can see how slow that was. Uh, for example, sometimes your swipe is not happening. There's no buttons, no manual control. So you've got slider bits here, which is like touch capacitive for your climate control to turn it on and off and change temperatures. You press this for climate control. Sometimes it does it straight away, sometimes it doesn't. And then you have to figure out how to switch it on, which is this little power button here. You tap that to switch on your climate control and then you can control different things. You've got heated steering, heated seats for uh, the passengers on the front, which is pretty cool. But besides that, once you've got it figured out, then the rest is just a matter of tapping things away. You can see, you know, still a bit sluggish, but you can control it. You can connect rather Android Auto wirelessly, Apple CarPlay as well. You can connect those to it. You can control your audio settings uh, in sound so you can adjust things like your bass, treble, etc. We go back, we've got your driver assist uh, equipment on here. So things like, um, let, me, let me power it on so you can actually see what you get with that. Um, so you've got a driver alert system to make sure it keeps an eye on you to make sure you're not tired, you know, 
make sure you're, you're okay driving. Uh, we've got your ADAS system, so you've got front assist, so emergency stuff, you've got lane keep uh, as well, oncoming car stuff, and you know, lane distance selected. You can control all these things for your active cruise control. And as I was saying earlier, there's a camera up front that will also read speed signs, so adjust speed for you automatically as you're driving on the road. So plenty of uh, safety equipment there. They've, you know, this is one of the safest cars. It's got five-star rating in the NCAP rating for safety and good for having babies in as well. So I wouldn't worry about safety at all when it comes to this. If you opt for the ID Buzz style again, you can change the, you know, the, the lighting in the car. So you've got all these options here. I think it's like over 30 colors or something that you can do and you can change it to suit your mood. You can go individual and, you know, get a bit more, get a bit more creative with the color that you select, maybe something to match the color of the car or whatever. And uh, you got wireless charging there, you can turn the whole thing off, on and off uh, if you wish to do so. But that's the screen for you, nice and, you know, it's big, that's not the issue. The issue is sometimes it's responsive, sometimes it isn't, but that's something that's plagued, plagued uh, Volkswagen so far for me. But uh, hopefully they'll update this in the future. If you've seen the uh, Volkswagen video that we put up recently for the ID2, uh, ID2 all, you can see what to expect in the future of infotainment system in Volkswagen. For parking, you get all sorts of like parking sense and control, but what's really cool is park assist, which means if I close the lid, it will just help you park into small spaces. It will do it automated, which is pretty cool. And like I mentioned earlier, you get all your parking cameras so you can see all around the car if you need to park safely. Moving over to the driver control, who's, you know, if I'm controlling the vehicle, what do I get? So again, we get these touch capacitive buttons there, which sometimes will work, sometimes it don't. Sometimes you accidentally press things when you're driving. The steering is nice and soft though, it's ET as well. And you've got flat bottom uh, area there for easy entry into the car, which is really nice. Uh, your gear stick is, your gear shifters are on this side, so that's where you control everything, which is cool, it's fine. And then on this side is where you get everything else. So this controls your lights, your indicators, your wipers for the front and back, which by the way, let's celebrate because we've got wi actual win window wiper on the back, which a lot of cars don't have, especially electric ones. So we get them here, but anyway, I digress. This controls everything. So at first you just have to get used to this and you might get confused at times. And then on here, we have our tiny little display that shows you all the important information. So for example, your speed that you're going at, how much battery life you got left, uh, safety stuff there for ADAS. And then uh, you also have your route guidance here. So at the moment, this works with Android Auto. So that tells me what I'm, you know, where I need to go once I put Google Maps on with Android Auto. But very simple, very straightforward. There's not a lot to talk about here. Maybe we should have got head-up display. I don't know, you know, it's a big car, uh, but visibility is good in here anyway. And we get that ID light, which comes across the front of the car here, for example. Uh, so when you're charging it, you can see that little light pop up there. So when you're charging, this will show you according to your charge status. When you indicate, it pops on. I think it's pretty cool. Adds that little play element. Talking about play element, if you look down the pedals here, we also get that play, pause, sort of a logo on the foot pedals there, which is pretty cool. Like I was saying, there's a fun, playful element with this car. So this brings me to the little gems that you find around the car. So like little symbols that they've sort of little nuggets that they've put around the car. Now let's, let's, let's show you them. So we have one here, this little smiley face. I think it's actually a wink. We have a little ID buzz here on, on the move. Another Easter egg is up here as well. Another ID buzz with the boot lead open. And then in the boot as well, there's another one that's located here. There's probably more Easter eggs in the car that I don't even notice myself, but if you know about them, drop them in the comments below. You know what though? If you're looking for a good getaway car, this might, this might actually be a really good one because you can sort of drive for a bit with the back door open. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Come on, hurry up, get in, let's go. <laughs> On the road with the ID Buzz, this is a style edition. There's also the ID Live, ID Buzz Life, which offers you just a bit less with, you know, 19 inch alloy and all that stuff. You can check all that out uh, if you're looking to spec one of these up. Uh, but let's start with the visibility in the car. Obviously this is a big car, it's essentially a bus um, and it's a van and there's plenty of visibility, plenty of glass all around the car. You know, you can see everything clearly. And when it comes to parking, you've got loads of parking stuff to help you, parking aid to help you park comfortably well. You've got the sliding door, allows you to get out very easily. And uh, unfortunately, one thing I forgot to mention, people sat at the back, you can't actually open the windows on the back, which is unfortunate. You've got plenty of glass to let light through. Uh, there's no sunroof here, which is fine. I think if you're gonna be mounting things like surfboards and stuff like that on top of the roof, you do not want glass material there anyway. So that's entirely okay. In terms of some stats, I know you guys will want some stats for this. You're looking at zero to 62 in around 10 seconds. You're looking at 105 kilowatt uh, in terms of power. So around 205, 205 PS. And this has a 77 kilowatt hour battery. 
and we've been averaging about 200 miles on the WLTP, although Volkswagen quoted for this uh, 258 miles, but that depends on the weight in the car, so people that you carry, the luggage, the weather condition, and with these big mirrors, for example, you know, drag, drag coefficient is going to be affected, so efficiency is not what this thing is good at. What this is good at is comfortability, practicality, so you've got plenty of space in here, that's not, that's not a problem at all. Styling is great as well, if you can be buying this, it looks fantastic, depending on what you go for. You can have this two-tone finish in, or you can pick solid colours to fit the whole thing, but I'd definitely go for that two-tone vibe, because it looks much better. Um, in terms of driving and handling, I think it looks great. I mean, looks great. It feels great. So when, whether it's me driving in the city, urban environment, me driving all this countryside here that we've got uh, out here, it feels really good. Motorway just feels like it's gliding, but road noise is another issue. So right now I can just hear the road noise and that's because we're also sitting on 21 inch alloys. So with that, you get more road noise. So that's something to bear in mind. Being able to reach for buttons and stuff like that is all, all very easy. I wish, again, there was head-up display because such a big fan. Going back to visibility though, one thing to mention is this head mirror is kind of tiny. We've got a big uh, windscreen on the back and that's, you know, allows you to see everything. But because this is so small, it doesn't fit the whole thing in, uh, which is a shame. It would be nice to have a digital head mirror there. This is a kind of scenario where that would actually work really well because then you'd be able to see everything that's behind you. And if you have passengers in the back seat, it just means if they're tall or, or whatever, it's not gonna hinder your view to the back uh, rear view uh, uh, window. So that would have been nice to have a digital head mirror in here. But uh, it's not a big deal. Back to the handling, in case you're wondering as well, with budget roll and all that stuff, it is a heavy vehicle. I mean, it's more than a ton in terms of weight. Uh, so you are shifting that around with the battery as well, but because of the MEB platform and the way the battery is laid out, you do get good low center of gravity. So weirdly, for such a big vehicle, it does handle corners very well. So going down these windy country lane roads, uh, you must get some body roll here and there, but body lean, but it's not excessive that you start to wonder if you want to drive fast or anything like that. So it fills, you with, it fills you with confidence and the steering feels really nice as well. So, you know, it's not too heavy, it's not too soft. I think it's just precise, it's bang on. It's uh, something I really like. So I have no complaints there at all. And it's not too slow. You know, for such a big vehicle, the zero to 62 doesn't translate into what you actually feel in real life. This has 310 newton, newton meters of torque. It doesn't exactly push you to the seat, but we take advantage of that electric uh, electrification, which means you get that instant, you know, uh, power. So when you put your foot down, you still get a bit of, you know, push to the seat a little bit. Hang on, you also get heated seats, but you also get massage in the seat as well, which Volkswagen, where are your priorities? <laughs> Why do you need a massage seat in one of these? Adds to the comfortability, I guess. Um, one thing I mentioned before, uh, because by the way, we hit record, I didn't record, <laughs> so I said so much before. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure that I remember some stuff I spoke about. Uh, for example, if you're gonna be driving this around London, for example, you do have to be mindful of the space of, I mean, the size of the car. So you do get a lot of uh, areas in London where you get those narrow roads. So you just have to be more spatial aware um, of where you're driving it so you don't hit things. And uh, you do get sensors all around the car that will warn you, uh, but that's, not enough so you still have to be aware of the space around you when reversing and parking and stuff if you're going to be using the parking camera here do bear in mind that it's not as accurate in terms of the distance between you and the car so still look around the car still look through your window to make sure that you're okay uh, because if you trust that camera there's a little lag between your movement and what you see on the camera so that's something to bear in mind as well but anyway i think overall excellent car plenty of space very practical good choice for people looking to switch from your typical SUV or family cars. This is excellent for that. It looks fun, it looks fantastic. Everywhere we've driven it, people are turning their heads and asking what this is. And you know, someone asked me if, I, if it still has a kitchen in there. I don't know where I got that from, but it doesn't have a kitchen in there. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop them there as well. And if this is your first time, as always, subscribe, smash the bell notification, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.